as we go through each sample, you'll see we have different scenarios, some that have problems, but I'll show you how to avoid these problems. And if you run onto this, if it was someone else's design, you'll know how to fix them. One thing to keep in mind when you're designing is, just because the software can actually make the joints, that doesn't mean you should. There's a lot of uh, pitfalls on why you shouldn't do certain joints for certain applications, but we'll cover those. You want to make sure that whatever you design is manufacturable. Let's start by just looking at this one down here in the corner. Let's go ahead and hide these other ones. Zoom in on that. I'm using a 3D mouse. That's how I can spin around a little easier. Um, you will see two different colors. I did this on purpose. So when you see the joint, the way it, uh, the treatment is actually done, uh, you can distinguish between the two and it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, they overlap. That's just how the frame was actually uh, created. So if we do go into design here, go to a miter, because you see blue and blue here, you don't have to pick in each individual like this. You can actually just cross over it and it will actually do the join itself. So this is miter. Uh, if you welded this, this would be a really simple thing to do. Not a problem there. Let's undo that. Notches. Let's do a notch. We're going with two different colors, so we have to pick the first one, select, and then pick the second one. This looks nice. This is impractical. If I actually uh, took this to a fabricator, they would think I'm crazy. Uh, let's hide the other portion of this, and you'll see what I mean. To fabricate this, to put it on a CNC and chop this all out, that would be wicked expensive. It's just not practical to do this particular joint. There are cases that you need to do this, but this is not one of them. Plus, this right here where it meets, this should actually be a little bit of chamfered off along during the manufacturing of that. I mean, the fabrication of it chamfered off so you have a bit of a gully. So when you do the weld, let me turn this back on so it makes sense. When you do the weld, um, there's something actually uh, that can actually connect to both parts. If it's just bead on top, it's kind of ugly. But if you have to grind it, you really need that that uh, chamfer in there to be able to get some material, a uh, weld material down in there. Inside, not a big deal. Outside, if it needs to look nice, this is not the best way. Let's turn off this and go into the next one. Okay, this is two U joints, common, miter, select. Everybody does this, this is just normal. That's not a big deal. This, if you actually did the notch, you would do a pick, select, pick the other one. Um, this is ridiculous and you'll see why. If I turn off this other portion On the wrong spot there. You see this edge here? It's super thin. You would not want to weld that. There's not enough strength in there. Uh, it's just not the right joint for this particular application. Uh, what most people would do, depending on how you laid out or how this has to be assembled, they would actually take this other part, go back into frame generator, and just rotate it into place and then do a butt joint weld through this. You, top side, you would still have to put a little bit of a chamfer in there to get some uh, weld material down in between so you have a nice solid uh, piece. Let's turn that off, go to the next. Okay, this is a combination, so you have a rectangular tube and this be the same thing. I would normally just flip this around and do a butt joint to the back of this. If you're so inclined to have to do this, sometimes it'll be down in the middle. You don't have a choice, but here's another problem with this. So if we do a notch, we pick, do the other one, do the notch. 
looks nice. To do it like an end piece, I would not do this. If it was in the middle, you wouldn't have a choice. And this is where it gets crazy. Let me get this. This. The CNC, the length of the bit that would need to go through there to make one, uh, one cut at all the way through is an expensive thing. What ends up happening, uh, if the tool is a little uh, worn out or what, you'll get chatter down in this other end. So realistically, the tolerance wouldn't be here as it would be up here. So they would have to make a fixture. Realistically, they would actually do the top half of this, flip it over in the fixture, and then machine the, re uh, the remainder. Sometimes you'll have a little notch here if it's not done right or if the fixture is off just a little bit. So getting this to fit, it would be practical for this if it's going in the middle of the U-joint. That makes sense. But when it comes to um, this, wouldn't recommend it. I would just do what we did on the last one. You take this. Um, sorry, going in the wrong place. Flip it around. Do a butt joint. Do a, a, a butt weld and it's perfect. You have no problem with that. Let's go to the next one. This will have, uh, the way it's actually done here, this can cause a little problem. When it's doing the subtraction for um, a notch, it actually is doing a Boolean. So if you do a notch, pick this, the other one, you're going to see the problem. It is a Boolean. It left this behind. It doesn't understand what to do, it, but that's how it is. To get around this, if you actually took the second one and popped it over and redid the treatment, it would clean it up. But you wouldn't normally do this as well. So you wouldn't do a notch for this unless they absolutely wanted that. This would be a corner. So you do this, the other one. And then you get a butt joint and you would weld. Same thing here. They would probably still put a little relief in there so they can actually um, get a, a bead of, of weld in there and then all the way around. This is already nice. See, you have a gap here. That would be a nice strong joint for a weld. So let's undo that. Let's go on to the next one. What else would this really need? Miter, cross, done. Standard, nothing unusual. I would use this every day, all day. Let's go on to the next one. You don't really have much of a choice. If you have round tubes, you're going to have to do an a actually a notch out on this particular piece. The only difference is when they're actually fabricating this, they it would not even though it's does this in the software, this would actually be ground off a little bit of a round joint. They would never take it to a point because it's not strong enough when you're actually weld. Um, so they would. This is how you would treat it. This would be any different. I would just leave it like that. It would be nothing unusual that you would do with this. Let's go to the next one. Two combinations. This would be treated exactly the same. So you would do a notch. It would bully in that out and weld all the way around it. It'd be fine. This is typical as well. You'll see that in a lot of designs. And I think this particular one has... Yeah, five. Let's turn these on. Now this one will have its own problems. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So this was actually created. Let me get straight 
and go up into the sketches. This was created with a uh, key and two lines that are full length, so full across and up and down, X and Y for that. So this piece is not going to be treated the same. You won't be able to fix this. The drawing should have been done properly in the first place. So that means it should have been a single line to here and a single line to here to get this to cut out. A butt joint, same thing, uh, standard. You go to here, pick your tool, you're fine. If, because this is one line, if I say, okay, I just want to do it to here and not worry about it and then mirror it or whatever, uh, if I do this, it fails. It doesn't know what to really do. This is probably just one of those things about the uh, generator that you can't get around. So this means this one actually should have been done uh, in different sections in the uh, sketch itself. If I go back to the sketch and I look at that, you can see it's a single line. So it should have been done individually to be able to make just that half and then uh, do the butt joints on the other point to be able to make this all the way through. So that has its own problems. Let's go on to the next. Let's see if we can do the next one. There we go. Visible. Hide this one. Okay. This is unique. Like a typical window frame. You can see this sketch how these were uh, created. So we want to do a miter on these. We can select these blows and see what happens. It actually did do the miter. It did cut through those. But now I want to have this trimmed out to here. So that means I would use an a trim here. Do the face tool. Pick this. It's going to have an error. It treat it doesn't know what to really do. It says error to occur to updates. Miter could not be done. It did do it's not talking about the miter, but it actually did do the butt joint or the flush joint to here. So if you look at these particular parts, it would actually work. On the corners, um, if you were going to do a miter on this, and I would suggest it for this. Miter would make more sense for this particular joint because it's sealed. If you actually did a corner joint for this, you have an opening so that if you're going to have this painted, you're not going to reach down and all the way down inside this tube to get to coat properly. So that means if this was steel, it would rust. So then you would have to put a cap on. So that means there's an extra part, more manufacturing. Instead of just doing a regular mutter joint, I, I, it just causes more complication and it costs more. So I would keep that in mind. Here we have a frame. Let's twist this around, go to the top. Miters. Let's just do two of the, let's do just these, okay, for the other end, say we want to do uh, corner joints, pick, pick, hit your plus sign, go pick, pick, okay, so the um, order that you pick those determines which ones, that, now this obviously would be the same thing that we did with that other last frame you would need to have to have a, an end cap if you needed to have it sealed. Hope this information was useful for the joints and also make your parts manufacturable. See you in the next tutorial.